Hey guys, Sean Taggy here. Today I'm going to be updating you on our multifamily, how the market's been going through Q3 2020. Now I know a lot of you are, and what we mainly sell are turnkey single family homes, but it is also good to watch out on the multifamily and there's a lot more data and outlets out there that report on how the multifamily market's going. And it does correlate pretty well to how the single family sector is going as well here in Memphis, Tennessee. So let me give you some updates. First off on the general economy and macroeconomics, Memphis lost around 50,000 jobs through the COVID era of 2020. And, but we've made some traction. We've gained a back around 20,000 jobs. So we're still at a net loss of 30,000 jobs. And we're trailing right around the national unemployment, maybe slightly higher than what the national unemployment is uh, for Memphis. So I guess it's showing a pretty good sign and you'll see here in a little bit why, why I'm thinking that's going pretty good. In terms of where demand and actually low, the lowest vacancies are rolling in the multifamily sector in Memphis, Tennessee. So if this was the, the Mississippi River and here's the Tennessee Mississippi state line, a lot of demand for renters is in Bartlett and also in Cordova and Germantown. Okay, and then here's, here's kind of the I-40 loop and all of that. So a lot of people are kind of creeping out into the suburbs. That makes sense. People want to have bigger apartment units. Those are typically what's over here. And also we've, we've had the, the best net absorption in these kind of these 1980 builds, multifamily properties. And then also it's away from the suburbs, right? People wanting to not be stuck downtown on lockdown. They're more free, wide open spaces out in the suburbs a little more and all of that. And they can work remote, remotely. So we've seen a lot more demand go out into that area as well. Uh, so then some other things for Memphis is what's going on is we've had record ground breaking. So record builds. We've had about 300 to 400 doors started groundbreaking through each one of the quarters of 2020, which is uh, above pace than any other year through the past five, 10 years of tracking this. I think that's showing builder confidence, showing that uh, I'll show out and later on that our price per door is going up, which therefore justifies the ability to build a new apartment complex and uh, the pr cost of building is less than what the, the sale price will be after that. So that's good. That is some great news for Memphis, showing some new builds going on in here. Then also uh, we have also the lowest, the lowest supply and demand since 2015. So let me go off on that. In terms of rentals in Memphis, Tennessee, we usually had our vacancy rate. Now this is for multifamily and I'll discuss on this. It is in the 10 or 11% of what it's been historically. Most other cities are lower than that. I think the reason why that is so high is because we do have a lot of apartment complexes in the rough areas that are like abandoned or offline and, or very vacant. So that really skews the numbers. In these A, B and true pretty good C asset classes, the vacancy is much lower than that. Kind of with other markets at 90, you know, at five or six or 7% vacant. But the average vacancy through 17, it was about around 11% and then 18, uh, 12 to 13 range, 19, we got down into the 12. So for 2020, we're back at 10.5. So the lowest, when this vacancy was at this point was back since 2015 at a 10.5 vacancy. And this all kind of fluctuates a lot with how many new units are being built and coming on board versus not, because you know a, a brand new, a 300 unit apartment complex is gonna be 0% occupied or 100% vacant for a while. So that's kind of factored in there. They don't skew those numbers and you kind of, you'd kind of think they would do that, but they don't skew that in. They wait till a year after the, the apartment's built to really go off these numbers. So that's why I'm thinking it's more kind of just some vacant properties. Like we've bought a multifamily in Whitehaven and it was about 60% occupied. So that, that's an outlier, just wasn't, they're just down units and the owner wasn't fixing them up. So that's put into these numbers why it's at a 10.5% vacancy. So yeah, anyway, still pretty good though. The best tre trending we've seen up in the vacancy rate. Uh, also what's correlating to this, uh, saying this is a graph and asking rents. So through COVID, so through 2020, asking rents per square foot have been going up and up and up. 
we're right at about 95 to 96 cents per square foot uh, asking price per rent, meaning a thousand square foot home asking rents for the multifamilies would be around $950 to $960 a month. So an upward trend. Yet again, seeing a demand in the, the larger three bedrooms and two bedroom homes versus the one bedrooms. The studios and the one bedrooms actually haven't increased the most in terms of rents. Where the most highest appreciation rent, asking rents, is in the two and three bedrooms. The national average through COVID, uh, vacant, uh, sorry, uh, rent increases has been around 2.4%. I had another video on that where some markets are down lower much and some are up higher. Memphis uh, has seen a th right around a three to three and a half percent in terms of rent rates. So we've had a rent appreciation even through here. And as you can see through all of COVID, our asking rents have gone up. So it's just showing the supply and demand and everything like that in here. So in terms of asking prices, so sales prices uh, and CoStar, this is all data from CoStar and their predictions through 17. So let me just jot these down here. In 2017, the average price per door was around the $59,000 per door sale price. In 2018, it, is, it was creeping around 62,000. In 2019, creeping around 68,000 average sale price per door. 2020, uh, at least at the end of Q3, is around 73,000 per door. So some great appreciation happening over there. Through this time as well, cap rates have continued to compress. So around 7.8, 7 7.7 uh, through 2018, 7.4 through this time. And these are all about rough estimate numbers. In 2020, cap rates are around 7%. As you know with cap rates, the lower the cap rate, uh, it's actually the better. That means investors are willing to take like a 7% return versus an eight, showing their risk tolerance and their confidence in the market, and therefore showing that they're willing to pay a little bit more price per door to, to take a little bit of a less return, but they're feeling confident about the market and everything like that. So my overall thoughts on here about Memphis is I, I definitely think the, the suburb living is a great way to go and invest in apartments over there. Also, I think there is just great value in finding just owning apartments right now. There's obviously a huge demand. We still haven't caught up in terms of building. Yes, building is starting to commence and a record breaking as you've seen three or 400 new doors coming online every quarter but I still think we're way far behind of what, what the demand is showing and what we're seeing in here. So those are my thoughts. And yeah, I, I do continue that seeing this trend that prices will go up and cap rates will go down. Thank you so much for listening. Let me know your thoughts and comments in the video below. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be hitting you out almost every single day. Thank you.